upright. How, yeah. How's your bike? It's, it's like a hundred bucks away from being totaled. Really? <laughs> Which I'm on the I'm on the fence with, with what I want to happen. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, man. I don't know. It's a pretty new bike. What what is what is Progressive saying? What are they? What are the claims adjuster saying? Twenty five thousand dollars in repairs, and so they said the bike's still worth it. So, okay, well that's good, I guess. I guess, yeah. I mean they're, I mean they're fixing it, they're fixing the whole thing. Yeah. So, um, and then of course I'm gonna get some upgrades. Okay, yeah. While while they have it apart, might as well, right? Yeah. So you're gonna go? Was it a one thirty something? One thirty one, right? It's what it is now. And it's going to be a what? No, no, no. I'm not going to mess with the motor. That's the only thing that they didn't have to touch. Okay. So, but I mean, I'm probably going to get a different freaking paint color. So, oh, ah, okay. What, but, are you, um, what are you thinking? Well, dude, the matte is cool looking. It's just a pain in the ass to... to... Matte black? No, no, no. The, it's matte right now. It's matte okay. black and silver. Yeah. And it's just a pain in the ass to keep, keep up with, you know? So it's like when you wash it and then you get it all gussied up, which I never do, but... Harley does when I take an oil change, when I get an oil change. So whenever I go through all those steps, it still looks like it's dirty. You know what I mean? So, so I was like, I, I don't, I don't want, I just don't want the mat anymore. And then it's real easy to make, to fuck up the paint. You know what I mean? If you have mat and you, and you like, you work an area really hard like that, you make it shiny. And then, so it's like, and you get all these shiny spots on your bike. It looks stupid. So, uh, okay. What are you thinking? Like white or blue? No, or? I'll probably go, um, I don't want black. So I would probably just go with the silver that, that is on the bike and just okay. make the whole thing silver. That's cool. So. I like that. The but um, only if it's cheaper. Uh, so. Are they going to have to repaint it? Yes, they are. Okay. But a matte paint, a matte two-tone paint versus a solid gloss. I, I, it should I think be cheaper. It should be. Yeah. So, so I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Well, that'd be kind of cool though. It's like, yeah, it's like having a whole new bike. Plus, with all your upgrades and shit. Yeah, new handlebars, new floorboards, and new fucking... You do some ape hangers? I, 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 yeah. Are I mean, you really? Well, so, like, well, I mean, me, I already kind of had them on there. You know what I mean? Like, they're mini apes, but... Yeah. And I'm going to go taller, for sure. Is that comfortable? Yeah. Okay. So, ideally, your your hands should be about level or just a little under your shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Gotcha. I mean, this right here is that's all subject. That's all whatever. But I mean, like mine were mine were usually lower. lower. Yeah, and that's why I had the hands going to sleep and shit. Yeah. You ready to get started or what? Man, I, I thought we were started. <laughs> <laughs> you got theme music. Ah, oh, that's funny. Uh, all right, man. Well, I am. I'm, dude. I, the first podcast. Yeah, this is a big fucking deal. I didn't realize. Like, I thought I was just going to sit here and we were going to, like, you know, have a phone fucking camera up or something. <laughs> well, Fuck, I'm, I'm almost nervous now. It's kind of like that, yeah. you know? So, what's your name? What do you do? Who do you uh, who do you do it to? I am Alan Jones. <laughs> I uh, broker insurance, and we do it to anyone who has to buy it, which is everyone. <laughs> <laughs> what got you? Um, what got you started into the entrepreneurial world of insurance? Man, uh, I'd say just dumb luck. Uh, I was, you know, sobered up in 2002. Yeah, I used to work for you, and uh, <laughs> you, uh, you can attest I was a terrible employee. That really hasn't changed. <laughs> um, I was plumbing in Lavernia. A guy named Philip Canlicchio, who's like literally the closest thing to Jesus I've ever met on this world. He's most he's a great guy, just the most righteous guy I've ever met. Uh, kind of a, a spiritual. Uh, center of influence, if you if you want to call it that, but uh, he he's like uh, he I was doing a job for him, and he told me about Aflac, and I was like, oh, okay, you know the duck. Right? To told and, you about Aflac, like what do you mean? Yeah, that's what that's what he was. That's what he did. He was a regional like sales coordinator of it, mm -hmm. and he had started with Aflac years ago, and he was like the man. Like oh okay, like okay. people they would fly him like Aflac from head, they're headquartered in Georgia, they would fly him to like different parts of the U S to go and say, this is what I'm doing. So how, how did you meet this guy? You're doing a plumbing job, plumbing for, job him? for him. Yeah. He moved out to Lavernia, had a, a bought that 90 acres right on the corner of the, uh, where the old golf course was. Oh right yeah. There, I know where that's at. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So if there's a metal building right there in the corner, he's got like 90 acres. That's right his. Yeah. That's, I know that metal building. Yeah. It's, it's a, yeah, a barn dominium, I guess, before, yeah. before they called him that. Yeah. Well, his whole, <laughs> it was a vent center. Cause he's, he's, he really into ministry. He still ministers. Okay. So, uh, he wanted to have like these, you know, Christian events and he has like, he was doing pumpkin patches there for a while. Yeah, that yeah, was real. Yeah. I, I don't know that. if they're still doing it or not. 
But uh, anyway, uh, I did that job for him. And, uh, you know, he's basically he's like, well, finish the job first and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> so, so anyway. Don't we, walk on me now. Yeah, we finished up. and uh, So I, were, were you, when you were plumbing, were you doing that for yourself? or that, you? that was like the only, like when I just kind of broken off, I was like, F it. I'm, you know, I didn't have a master's license or any of that stuff. So I just kind of was doing my own thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of knew I didn't want to be a fucking plumber. Yeah, you know, I just was like, you know, it, it was a good trade to know, and I'm glad I did it. It's always good to have a trade. Yeah. You know what I mean? Worst case scenario type stuff. Worst case scenario is right. I can always go back and, you know, work it and make 20 bucks. Hell, they make a lot more than they Used nowadays to, yeah. than I did. So yeah. you didn't have any interest at all in any kind of insurance or anything like that. You were just, you went out was, on your own. That was my That first, was your first plumbing yeah, job. Was, was it your last? Yeah, that was the first and the last. <laughs> That's right. So this is your second entrepreneurial endeavor. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, yeah, I guess so, right? And uh, But yeah, he, um, I did okay, too. I mean, I got in and, and did all right. Luckily, Beth, you know, was in, she was graduated as a nurse at the time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I did okay, but I wasn't doing okay as far as, like, money. Well, I, sure. I was still spending way more than I was making, and it was be, it was creating issues in the marriage and you know, like I like to make the jokes. If you're making money, your jokes are funny and your wife finds you attractive. <laughs> and if you're not making money, then everything's a fucking joke and you're a fat turd. So get away from not the mood. And uh, so, but anyway, she, she, I mean, obviously couldn't have done it without her. I don't think, I don't think I would have had the confidence to do it without her. Yeah. Um, and then the, the plumbing or the, just, just really just uh, the, the insurance side. Yeah. Okay. Cause plumbing, I felt like, you know, I can always, there's yeah. always a house to plumb. There's sure. always something I could do, or I could always just go and get a job. So you went out on your own for the Aflac deal. Yeah. And, um, it, 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 the, just the fact that Beth was, was, was working full time and, and doing good. It gave you the confidence to just say, fuck it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try this out. Yeah. I just, yeah. Cause I kind of had, Put her through school. I mm-hmm. like to, that's the way I like to tell the story. She may not. She might not agree. But <laughs> I mean, whatever. It's. Uh, but as soon as she got done, it was an RN. She started making like forty bucks an hour. I was like, yeah, that's that equals two two twenty dollars an hour. <laughs> so yeah, we can make this work. <laughs> and then you know, I I uh, and and I and I in hindsight, I could have worked a lot harder. I could have done a lot of things differently. Yeah, it, hindsight's always twenty twenty. But, um, worked harder with what? Just, just been more motivated and worked. Like with that I, Yeah, I feel like it's funny. Uh, it, it, there was a sense of laziness that I get knowing that security was there. Yeah, and I feel like with entrepreneurship, it's that's bad a yeah. lot of times. Like it, you, the, sometimes the best thing is is when you jump off of that boat is like there is no life preserver, or whatever. You got to swim. Yeah, and and. Yeah. And you're either gonna you're gonna sink or swim. Yeah, it's gonna happen fast. You're either gonna <laughs> like say f this and yeah. you know hopefully somebody you, you gets can, you out or you're gonna you're gonna make it. You're, you're gonna tread water for a little bit, but you know and, and <laughs> if man, you're not getting closer to land. <laughs> well, and, and I feel like in the last year that's kind of what's been happening. You know, with I mean, she you know, her house, her dad built her house. House was paid off. We were living there. You know, spending money on whatever, mm-hmm. so I could really. It, I'd already kind of built it up a little bit at that point. Sure. So basically, all my money was just fun money. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and then you know, last summer we're moving up to Canyon Lake, and it's like, <laughs> and man, I, I, I in the last year I have you know probably tripled in size. Nice. And only because you it, had to. Yeah, it kind of had to, and and also it was just luckily, you know, I say luckily, grace of God, whatever, it's just it just worked out well, and now uh, like. Just talking to a guy that, uh, for a big top ten broker in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're wanting to buy me out, and uh, I might go. I might go. That's an exciting conversation to have, huh? It is. I mean, it, it kind of. That the I've already been through the hardest parts, mm-hmm. so there's a part of me that's like, why would you like go be an employee? Like you know, you're not a good employee, and you know, yeah. and that's and I I I know I'm not, but. I know how to write business. I know how to talk to business owners. I know how to, you know, I can just, you know, it's always become natural for whatever reason. And uh, usually when I'm talking to people, there's a, there's a little secret for anyone that's listening. Don't talk about fucking insurance. Don't talk about whatever you're selling. <laughs> Go in there and just talk to people. Yeah. Uh, get a relationship going first. You know, you ain't got to try to sell it right then and there. Especially if you're dealing with the big stuff, it's never going to move fast anyway. Right. And uh, so just, just go in there and 
bullshit, you know, make, make them look forward to, you know, you know having a lunch or, or hanging out or whatever. And, um, and that's kind of been the approach. And well, that's going to also come down to a lot of your personality too. That's true. There's no way in hell I could go in there and, and, and try to talk about something that, you know what I mean? Unless we're talking about some nerd shit. Yeah, well, I was gonna say, <laughs> you're, you're more personable than you give yourself credit for, but yeah, your, your mind, I was just telling this guy, I was like, this guy's like, like, Rain Man smart. I mean, he's got, <laughs> oh, yeah. like, he's got something up there that it, it, his mind works in a different way, but it's like, once you kind of understand it, it's like, it's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, this guy's really smart. He just, uh, and, and there's a lot of people out there that are, uh, it, it, you know, you still have a good personality, but there's a lot of people I know that, you know, they can go out there and they can hustle. But when you see their personality, they're very dull. But on the other side of things, like on the number side or whatever, they're, mm-hmm. they're phenomenal. They can, they can, you know, put together a, a thing in half a second on why you should go with them just using numbers. Right, right. So there's a lot of different avenues to try to, you know, get in there and, and just make sense of it. Because at, at the end of the day, uh, you know, who got me into PNC was that guy, Brandon Hill. I don't know if you ever met him, the big guy. I, like, I know the name. Okay, well, he's got, he's a multimillionaire. He's, his agency is killing it. He's, you know, he's in San Antonio. He employs a whole bunch of people. He's, he's badass and he's younger than me. But, you know, he's kind of like pedigreed in the insurance world, he, and he's really smart. Uh, but he's like, hey, get stop selling that Affleck shit, dude. Like, sell insurance people have to buy. Uh-huh. And that's why I got into the PNC side. I stopped selling the voluntary stuff. Look, pretend for a second I don't know anything about insurance. What's the difference so, between the Affleck stuff so and the PNC stuff? Affleck is a voluntary insurance. Like, you can, you know, for if you get cancer, if you get, like, the what ifs. Like, you don't have to buy it. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you are out there driving around on your car, then and you get pulled over and you don't have insurance, you know, you're going to get a, uh, your car impounded. You know, basically it's a, it's a law where you yeah. have to buy it. If you're a business. So P and C, that's the stuff that you need a law that that's against the law not to have. Basically. Yeah. If you're a business, you, you know, you need to have a general liability. liability yeah. yeah. So or, it's, but, it's insurance they have to buy. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I was like, well, that, that does make sense. And, uh, I don't really want to sell people shit. Yeah. It's easier just to say, look, I'm, you got to have this. Yeah. You got to have it. I'm hopefully going to help you and make it better or, you know, fix it or, Maybe even save money. I don't know, depending upon what angle you want to take. The higher up you get into it, the less you talk about, oh, I want to save you money. It really, you know, when you're dealing with people who have millions in revenue, yeah. you want to just make sure that what you're selling them is actually... What you're selling them. Yeah, the right shit. <laughs> Not just yeah. like, I'm going to save well, you a couple bucks. Well, because insurance is never, you know, like if somebody sells you a camera, you can tell right away if the camera's what you need or what's not. You know, insurance is like you, you when you need it. Well, just, just like what happened with me, you know, like, so I, I hey, buddy, I, I, I'm getting a bike. You give me a policy for my bike so I can drive off the lot today. And then I, I didn't, I, dude, I didn't know nothing about that policy that you wrote for me, you yeah. know, but you knew me enough to put down what I needed versus what, you know, I probably would have chose. Right. Yeah, we could have just and then put so, a liability on it. And yeah. And then, so yeah, like, yeah, I, I wiped out and then, you know, I was like, Hey man, so about that insurance policy, is it, is it like a real policy or is it was just something that it's not going to get me a ticket? <laughs> so, <laughs> but, <both. laughs> but yeah, so, but I mean, you know, insurance is one of those things where, you know, look, I mean, I tell people all the time, like when it comes to you know, accounting, you know, CPAs and, and insurance or, or whatever, all the stuff that, that is business related that is outside of my sphere of knowledge. You know what I mean? Like, like by trade, I'm a draftsman now, you know, like I draw blueprints. That's what I do. I do it well. And you know, everything else is just necessary evils that you kind of have to know. You know what I mean? Like, so like my CPA is like, well, Hey, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, my eyes gloss over and I'm like, Oh, I noticed there was a pause. Is it time for me to start talking now? <laughs> what, where do I sign again? What, what do you want from me? You yeah. know? So like insurance, to me is like, yeah. insurance <laughs> for me is one of those things. I'm just like, look, man, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know. I don't want to really know anything about it. I just don't want to get in trouble later. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and no, you're not getting screwed. I mean, you know, there's, there's a, uh, you know, if you're using a broker, they should be able to like, give you some comparatives mm-hmm. so you know it's like you know hey, well no this is the best company here sign here like yeah. you know uh twenty thousand dollars a year i'm, I'm only making a hundred you know like, <laughs> like yeah. well th- those numbers don't really add up you know <laughs> that if it was it's twenty thousand dollars a year to protect a million dollars of, of income or revenue or whatever uh, you know th- that those kind of yeah. know, that kind of makes a little bit more sense um and so yeah it, it, yeah i'm the same way man anything outside of my little realm of producing and you know whatever like 
my my big struggle right now, and the reason I'm talking to that big company is is the staffing in all the backside of insurance. Which you could is, do so much more with the structure they have. Yes, yeah, and I've tried with employees, and I, I, maybe I'm a terrible boss. I, you know, one got sick, just you know, unfortunate deal, and uh, and now I'm just kind of like you know, these people got it all ready to go. Well, you got an HR things. department for that. Just step in and just bring bring food to the table, and right. they'll they'll take care of it all. You know, that, that is almost worth the idea of like, you know, me having to like watch what I say on social media. Mm. <laughs> how do you, how do you I mean, feel about that? <laughs> I, I don't really want to do that, but would I do it if it meant, you know, sure. I'm go to making 500 grand a year, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. for right now, I'm still, I can pay young. somebody to do my social media for me. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah. Or I can just not have it. You know, yeah. it's just like, There's you know, a, I, I'm, I'm. I'm, I, I'm fighting the good fight. You know, it's a civil war going on right now. So, yeah. And I'm on Facebook fighting it. <laughs> so, that's right. Hey, let, let's go back to where you said um, this. Did you say this last year you tripled your business? This last year or so, last couple of years? Yeah, really, it's been the last year. Last year? Yeah, within the last, hell, it's not even a full year, really. So, uh, that's, that's interesting. Um, I would like to talk about how uh, being an entrepreneur can make you not motivated when you don't have to be motivated. So like what you're saying, it was just fun money whenever you and were together and, and it was just like, you know, everything's paid for every, you don't, you don't need, you, you don't have to have any kind of income. Right. And yeah. then you get some income. It's like, let's go buy a boat you know, or, or whatever. Right. Yeah. So as an entrepreneur, how do you f- fight that? I mean, how do you, so like if you're moving forward in your life, right. And then you, you get into this huge six figure salary deal, what what keeps you motivated? Cause it doesn't sound like it's the money. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, uh, there, I guess that's always the struggle of us. Like where if you're an entrepreneur, you're obviously, you have some self motivation mm-hmm. and you want to get out there and you want to do good and you want to, you know, you want to, you know, you want to have, but you also want to have nice stuff and you also want some time to enjoy all that. Yeah. And, and that's, that's been my struggle from, you know, I guess day one is like, you know, it, I don't plan. I'm not Dave Ramsey. Yeah, well, I, I probably should be. I should follow his. You know, you know, save. You know, and I can have a better life later on. You know, our family haven't that we haven't lived long historically. Yeah. So <laughs> I didn't plan for the future. I didn't think I was going to be alive. Especially Just all of a sudden, in, here we are. Twenties. Yeah. yeah, yeah. None no, of us really no. thought we'd make it this far. How do you how do you stay um, how do you stay politically neutral as an entrepreneur? I don't. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, uh, it, I made a decision, you know, when I broke off and, and started doing my own thing. It, it, I've got, I got to that point where it's like, you know, I don't want to do business with people that uh, that think uh, it, that big government is a good thing. Mm-hmm. I, I just, uh, it, to me, it is. Uh, you know, and of course they think the same thing about me. I think I think they're fucking stupid, and they sure. think I'm a fucking idiot. And uh, no point in moving forward for this relationship. That, that's right. <laughs> and, and, and so it's like you know, you can go do business with people that are in line with you. And and frankly, I uh, I've made I think I made the right decision, especially in this part of the the world. You know, yeah, where we're you know we're seeing a lot of crazy shit going on. Right. And at the end of the day, it's like you know. Uh, uh, there's still people out there that think, you know, government's the answer to the problems mm-hmm. instead of the opposite way around of like government's the problem pretty much right. everything out there. And, and, um, I, you know, I haven't, haven't gotten anyone to give me a good enough argument from the other side to, 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 to sell them insurance. Think, oh man, you're right. Oh man. That's, I see it that way now. <laughs> here's, you know, a, here's a policy. Now you, you've changed my mind. I will yeah, do business with you. Joe Biden is a good president. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I, I don't know what the hell I was thinking, you know, like in Trump, you know, a, a business guy who just spoke his mind <laughs> instead of like this guy who just says what you want to hear. Oh man. We're going to go down this rabbit hole if I don't cut you off right now. Yeah. No, that's um, right. I, I'm going to ask you to uh, pick one of these cards. Okay. Pick one card, and I was going to do a lightning round, but I'm not now, so I'm just going to have you pick one. Okay, let's see here. What does it say? Be able to erase people's memory or predict their future. Would you rather one or the other? Mm, I would, I think, predict the future. Yeah. yeah. And, and initially, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the be, same. I'd be like, uh, if I could do that, I'm, we're, we're playing some lottery or something. <laughs> let's walk around, touch people until yeah. I find the guy that... Predict the future. Yeah, buy a lottery ticket. We'll split it. <laughs> I'm feeling I'm feeling good about this one, but <clears throat> that, that's funny. So yeah, you, they had they make these little cards that you can just pick up and 
That's that's a good little conversation piece, right? Uh, it's it's better than some of those stupid drinking games that I've. Oh, there there's some there's some dumb ones in here. Oh, okay. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know you can't you know they can't all be winners. <laughs> the structure of entrepreneurship, selling insurance. You know what I mean? The, the like what we were talking about earlier, sink or swim. I think that's, you know, there's such a misconception I think about. You know, they don't know which way to get started. They don't know what's important and what's not important. You know, they're like, okay, I want to start my own business. I need an LLC. I need a CPA. I need all these things. I need this office space. I need all this equipment. I need, that's not always the case. You don't always need all that stuff. Uh, if, that, if mom and dad are rich, <laughs> good for you. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, there's, um, uh, there, there, there's so many different, there's so many different things that you don't, have to, uh, there's so many different, um, uh, I always say licks, but there's, o- there's always so many different types of, um, I don't know, jobs isn't the right thing, but you know, side hustles, I guess that you could do where it's like, you don't need nothing but your brain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just to get out there and do it I the, mean, really like make an ass out of yourself, like learn and, and you start will, before you're ready. Look, look around. This yeah. is exactly what we're doing Absolutely. right now. <laughs> That's right. You went, yeah, went out and got a bunch of equipment. The first little setup, I guess, fucked up. And now, you know, you got a whole new one. And, uh, and it, now you already know <laughs> twice as much as anyone who went to school trying to figure out how to do a podcast. Cause you've already oh, done it twice now. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, but it's just start buying stuff and plugging it in places and see what happens. So, so you knew about these cards. I didn't even know about those. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook sold me those damn cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they heard you talking about podcasts. So all of a sudden those ads pop up, right? Yeah. And, uh, that's funny, man. They, those fucking spies. So, yeah, they've been, they, you know what, I've been getting on my uh, uh, little advertisements are the t-shirts for fat people. <laughs> like, the guy who used to be athletic, and now he's not, and so here's the t-shirts that you can wear that that cover it up, make it still look good in a t-shirt. I'm like, oh, man, I'm, I'm about to buy some, too, so, because it doesn't look like I'm losing weight anytime soon. How long have you been selling insurance? 2008. 2008? So, that is now... Is that 14 years? Shit. That's crazy, man. You went out on your own right before the recession, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No, that was no, that was not good either. Yeah. So. Well, did you go back to the that guy, that, the dude you did a plumbing for, and be like, hey, man, you need any remodeling done? Because I, I don't, I'm not selling too much insurance. Man, I have been, I have been blessed. My sisters, my brother-in-law, you know, he, he got me into his big home health agency. Like, I was able to get some accounts that were, um, you know, Basically, just because of, you know, privilege of who you I know. was, my sisters and, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, I, and, and of course, you know, actually being a fairly decent enough person to, to let him, because he would have never let me in if I was, you know, like when he first met me, he didn't like me. as when I was drinking. Mm. In, in fact, his, the first blind date with my sister, I had just gotten out of jail and it was my birthday. <laughs> so Buster had actually put out a little bit of extra money to get me out on my birthday. We went to Dave and Buster's and that was my older sister invited him to, as a blind date to meet my younger sister. And uh, so we joke about it, you know, like you had it, you, you knew right then and there you had a chance to run. Yeah. And he, he always says, no, I wanted to stick around because I thought we'd wind up on Jerry Springer. That's the only reason I stuck around. <laughs> Be so, good stories. Yeah. So, but, uh, but yeah, and, and he's man. You talk about like me and me and uh, Dawes Chad were talking the other night. We were joking about it because he was talking about podcasting too. Oh yeah. And I was like, well, don't worry. He's starting with me first. He's starting with the lowest level of entrepreneur, and he's working his way up. So <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, so for the final final one, you need to talk to my, my brother in law. That guy, you know, literally started from nothing, and you know, was made <clears throat> just a fortune. And he's he's really just smart. He's just a smart business guy. He never took a loan out. Never, you know, always. How'd you find your business? Out of your pocket? Dude, I literally, the first two years, I was in overdraft almost every month. Every month I was just like, I was getting paid commissions on what I sold to get back to like zero mm. and then go right back in. I'd have, I'd had, I had that first year, I had like almost $4,000 overdraft fees. Holy shit. Just because, you know, my stupid ass couldn't help but swipe my card. Uh-huh. And sometimes it was like, well, I thought I had the money and I didn't. And I would go buy a soda, and you know it's a two dollar soda with thirty two fifty overdraft charge tied to it. Oh my man. god! So yeah, you know, I, <clears throat> it was it was rough, man. That, and that's what I mean. Like that, I went through the the hardest hardest part, starting it from nothing. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't, no family, my family's poor. Right. You know, my sisters. You know, Marilyn's done very well for herself. 
but only here recently. She's and, also an entrepreneur. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, that's she's a great example. Actually, yeah, she's probably the last one. She's the grand. She's never stops going. And then, um, but yeah, so uh, no, 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 no loans. No, to, yeah, no to have capital. No SBA grant money. I left. I left my ex wife all everything in, in the divorce. <laughs> so there was no, you know, there was no equity of a house I could have got or anything <laughs> like that. So it was, uh, it was, it was tough, man. It was, it was not fun. Early on, it was really not fun. And I felt, you know, kids and stuff, you want to... Do you ever think about, like, when all that's going on, right, and you're seeing the overdrafts and you're seeing the opposite of what entrepreneurship is supposed to do for you, right? Right? It's like, you know, you go into business for yourself because it's like you're going to make all this money or... It was never really about the money for me. It was more about the idea of there's no limit to what you can do. Freedom, too. And then there's freedom to do whatever it is that you want or need to do. You know what I mean? I didn't, I ever really play well with the nine to five idea. You know what I mean? And it's not because I'm a bad employee. I do, I would say I'm definitely stubborn, right? And it's like, look, Jason, we need you to make this pin. Okay. Now clock in at nine, go home at five and you get your one hour lunch break, you know? Okay, fine. (laughs) And that's going to work good for about a week. (laughs) <laughs> and then week two starts, and then I have an epiphany on how I can make this pin faster, right? And then I'm just, next thing I know, I, I've burned 80 hours into this week, and I'm just focused in on this problem that I'm trying to solve. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, most of the companies that I work for, they never had a problem with that. You know, oh, well, this dude's on salary. He's paying him 40, 40, 40 hours a week. He's working 80. This is great. And then when I'm like, solve the problem of whatever it is, hey, I want to take this week off. <sighs> You don't have that. You don't have that much time in, in vacation. Excuse me. I just did two months of 40, 80 hour weeks. What do you mean? I, I can't take a week off, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so like, that's, you know, I, I just, I just, just never get down that way. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to be committed to the problem. If the problem at hand, I'm going to be committed to it. I want to solve this problem the best way that I know how to, and I'm going to do it as fast as I can, as efficient as I can. And, um, as profitable as I can, you know? I, I can't, I, I can't plan to solve these problems in your nine to five time frame. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. No. And so for me, freedom was a big thing. You know, uh, I remember when I went out on my own for my first gig, um, it was, uh, um, uh, it was also <laughs> it was 2007. And so, um, I, I mean, I had a lot of, I had a lot of little things, but this is like the first time I committed to, to actually saying, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to start a business. You know, and it took me several year several years to treat that business like a real business. And when I did, you know, that's a whole different conversation, that's, whole different discussion. But that's a big struggle it, early on too. So um, I was convinced financially that I did not need to pay myself. I was convinced that I'm just going to put all this money into the pot because I don't live kind of I don't like live extravagant anyway. You know what I mean? I'm just like you know, any, any money that I make usually goes back into the business. But so for me, I was like, I, I, there's, it's silly to pay myself. So I'm just going to put it into this big pot checking. And, um, you know, of course I got to eat and then I'll just swipe out stuff that I need and, you know, whatever. When I actually started paying myself, I, 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 I started a different checking account, personal checking account. And I would, and it would, it took me so long for my head to get wrapped around this. I was like, I'm going to take money from this account and move over into this account. This is stupid. Why am I doing this? But I was, I just, I'd convinced myself this is what I needed to do. And then I, I, I never really looked too much over here in this, this account, you know, where my business account was. Yeah. I just focused on whenever I needed to go get gas, when I needed to get groceries, whatever it is I needed to do, vacations, whatever. I looked in that other account, my personal account. And I'm like, yeah. Hey, there ain't, I can't do, I, I can't, I can't do that this weekend. There's, there ain't no, there ain't enough money in there, you know? And then, so w- once I actually started paying myself, I was like, I could not believe how much money I was like, kind of, I don't want to say squandering, but just, you know, you just lose track of it. You know, Oh yeah. there was a big thing going around back in the uh, early two thousands about um, or mid two thousands about, um, uh, you know, the S- SBA is giving out all this money and, you know, get your free grant money. And, you know, they, 
uh, all you got to do is fill out these forms. And it was, I'm sure there's a lot of that that's, that's true in real life, but we never came across any of that. <laughs> you know, we yeah. tried like hell. We tried to get all that free money, but yeah, at the end of the day, it was like, I still had to go to work. That's the way I was looking at it too. It was like, you know, it's like, well, if there's an opportunity for me to get any kind of this money and not have to pay it back, then I'm going to go for it. And even if I can't get a little bit of money and, and pay it back at a low interest, you know, uh, I'm all right with that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but yeah, that was I mean, like 24 grand or something like that. I mean, it was yeah. under the threshold of where I got to provide a bunch of documents and stuff. Kind of not to, worth it. Yeah, just trying to stay under the radar. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's So that's funny how you say that 24 grand, right? So I was having this conversation with somebody the other day about, about, um, about money, you know, and hourly employees, uh, it was with my son, actually. Hourly employees have been tricked, I think, by many years of uh, this conditioning that your time is worth an hourly rate. Yeah. And it is so hard for people to conceptualize time that's not uh, tied to a dollar, a dollar an hour. It is so frustrating for me to hear somebody say, well, I charge $50 an hour. Oh, I don't, I have no emotion about that because that does not tell me all the data. Yeah. How fast do you work? If you are $50 an hour and it takes you 20 minutes to walk in the door, <laughs> I got a problem with that. You know, if you get, if you, if you're charging 50 bucks an hour and you, you know, running laps around everybody, well then that's way, that's all together different. A, an hourly rate is just, doesn't mean shit. You know what I mean? To, yeah. to me. Well, and especially if you're somebody who's honed a craft, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you're, you're shorting yourself uh, unless you're charging accordingly. It may take you an hour to do the job, but you need to be charging three hours because that's what it would take somebody who hasn't honed that craft to, to do that job. So, like, you need to at least be getting paid what you're worth, which is normally if I was And that's rookie, subjective, right? Yeah. I mean, because it, everybody who's who's paying the bill thinks that you're worth a lot less. Usually, but you know, <laughs> then, then they can go find out somewhere else if you're really, if, yeah. you're, if you're confident and you're good, you know? Early on in my life, I've never been very good at negotiating because I'm not, I don't feel it's my place to tell you what you're worth. You know, yeah. if you're going to say, Hey, it's, I'm going to charge you six grand to put these foam tiles up in this, in this room. I'm going to say, I can't swing that. I can't afford that. You know? And that's the truth. Yeah. I, I have, I have, I, I, I'm not going to tell you that what you're telling me is not or is correct. It's irrelevant to me because I am not willing to pay that for that service. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and this all started when you said 25 grand. Yeah, you, you said it in a manner that is like $25,000 isn't a lot of money. And it's not com- comparatively. You know what I mean? So somebody who's making 11 bucks an hour, that's a lot of money. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's like, well, $25,000, how could you make that? You know what I mean? Well, I could sell some things. Um, I could do this type of work. I could do like for me, uh, it would be like X amount of square footage. You know what I mean? And that's how, that's how I charge. I charge by the square foot. Not that that's right or wrong. It's just how I do it. Yeah. So it's like, oh, well that would be X amount of square feet. You know what I mean? And it would take me about X amount of hours to do that. So I got an idea of how much money I can make in a year. If it's me doing all those stuff, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So <clears throat> an hourly rate is very misleading and it's unfortunately the only way people understand how to communicate think, think about well, this so it's the education system too well yeah true I mean, sure know. but so like even for me i mean even now it's, it's tough sometimes to try to wrap your head around what somebody's telling you you know what i mean it's like you know um you know, like because of the political environment, there's lots, lots of times where people, you know, they'll say something about bartering. Let's go back to a barter system. I don't, people can't do it. People can't figure it out. You know, you can say that, but let's say I trade you this soda for that microphone. You know, it's like, well, I, you know, this microphone was given to me, so I don't really have a value associated with it. You know, you don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so. <clears throat> but you really wanted that soda, so everyone's happy, right? It should be, right? Yeah. yeah. That's how it should work. You know? So uh, I was thinking, the, I, was, I was talking to my son about this the other day, but um, I think it was the Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe dollar. At one point in the not so distant past, the Zimbabwe dollar was on par with the U.S. dollar. Like they, they were the same, they had the same buying power. Yeah. Right? 
and they had hyperinflation. It went through the it went through the roof. I, I, I'm 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 butchering uh, and reciting something from Ron Paul. Um, currently, it's like you got to take a wheelbarrow full of Zimbabwe dollars to go get a coffee, you know? And like, you can look it up on the internet. There's kids with, with wheelbarrows of, of money. You know what I mean? Wow. So right where we're headed. <laughs> that aside, you can't, you can't, uh, unless, you know, you're in Zimbabwe and you have to, you can't wrap your head around that, you know? Yeah. Like, like, you know, like the U S dollar is what it is. And everybody knows how much that, how much bread they can buy with that, you know, United States dollar, you know, and, and, um, it's just, it's such a, it's such a, it's such a tough, tough subject because you, you you don't, you you know, you're associating that with how much of those you make and how much you receive based off of how much time you put in a job, you know? And that is, I think fundamentally what is keeping people from entrepreneurship. Yeah. The, the, the safety net of knowing, I think my best year as a plumber was like forty two thousand bucks. wasn't You know, wasn't really that much, but it was it was it was consistent and yeah. steady and all that good stuff. And my best year with Aflac was like seventy five. And um, and not only that, you know, basically I was able to write off everything and make it to the government. How, how would you how would you consider um, how would you rate the the amount of effort you put into being a plumber versus the amount of effort you put into being an uh, Aflac salesman? You know, it's it's funny because it was it, plumbing it was you know nine to five Monday through Friday. Don't bite your fingernails. All the rules <laughs> Shit plumber, rolls down right? there. Yeah, um, and, and you know every now and then I was on call for weekends, like if I was working at Gibson or whatever with those bigger companies. Whereas Aflac was just you were walking it and talking it, mm-hmm. but it what didn't feel like work. You know, I wasn't out there digging ditches. I wasn't out there, you know, you know, with a auger machine, you know, playing in other people's poop. And <laughs> you know, it, it, it to me it was a lot better. But the problem was is that I would make. I mean, my best day was when my brother in law let me into his big account, and I made you know like close to twenty grand in one day. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah, Alan Jones being Alan Jones went and bought me some gold teeth and you know rims and <laughs> didn't work for the next two months and then you know it was gone you know like like and then here we are again and, and she would have rather had me made you know forty five thousand a year forty two thousand a year whatever but it come in consistently every Friday right than the way my sporadic you know big big month yeah nothing, nothing next month huge month because I was I my spending was out of control and I just wasn't disciplined I, you know I wasn't. It, and that was kind of like part of the learning curve of, of just like, well, yeah, you, you don't I, I remember, every day. dude, I remember the, I remember I, I, when I was not on my own, I remember one of my biggest goals was to get a five digit check before the period, five digits before the period, yeah. you know? And when that finally happened, I, it took me a week to cash that check or deposit the check. Cause I was just like mesmerized. I was like, Oh my God, look at all that money. Yeah. It was like 15 grand or something, but I was just like, still. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm hitting it. You know, I'm like, Oh man, you know, it was such a, it was such a feeling, such a rush, you know, but yeah, uh, you know, six months till you get the next one is sometimes kind of tough. And that's on me though. I mean, and that's the thing. If I, if uh, a lot of people would have stayed disciplined and they would have, they would have put that money away and act like they didn't make it. Mm -hmm. And then, and you see those guys and those, those guys take off and they, they get to the top really fast. My journey has been a lot of ups and downs, <laughs> and uh, and and for whatever reason, I, I don't know if I would change. There are some things I would change, of course, but I mean, it, it kind of made me who it was. I was able to enjoy the ride. A lot of those people that are like that, they can't enjoy where they're at. They're always just yeah. constantly go go going until they wake up one day and it's like you know I'm I'm about to die. And then, and then what? Like yeah. you spent your life you know amassing all this fortune for what? You know, dude, that I'm. Uh, that right there, what you just said, has really affected my life in this last couple of years. I've really, really reevaluated a, a lot of what means something to me. Yeah, what's really important, right? Because it used to be, um, you know, it, it used to be the money. It used to be like, you know, I, I've got to hit this. Uh, you know, I've got to make these goals. i got to make this amount of money. i got to work, 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 work. Yeah. And then so... Uh, you know, a, a lot of things have has happened to me in these last couple of years, and it's like I have lost so many people in you know arms reach. You know what yeah. I mean? Like family, friends. 
you know, and it's like, you know, I, I, I bought a damn black suit. First time in my, my adult life I've ever owned a suit. I bought a black suit because I was going to so many funerals. That's absolutely right. You know, and then so then like, you really get to thinking like, what am I doing? You know, yeah. and, and this really started when my son graduated and I'm very fortunate. Everybody used to make fun of me when I was younger that um, I had a kid, you know, but it worked out really good for me because um, when he graduated high school, it, it, it's kind of like when it started to set in, I just didn't know it. You know, the empty nester feeling, the yeah. what now I spent all of the first part of his life just keeping my head down, working, making sure there was food on the table. It was a great distraction. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sort of. Because, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, you, you've got to do these things. you got to make sure your kids are taken care of. you got to make sure, you know, they get the, all the stuff. So whenever he started, you know, and it started even younger with him because he started taking care of himself much sooner than hell I did. You know what I mean? He was buying his own clothes in high school, you know? And then so, like, whenever he just finally just was like, like I didn't have to take care of it. Like I felt, I felt alone. I was like, where are you going? I, yeah. <laughs> you don't, you don't need me to go buy you lunch or you don't need, you know, you don't need lunch money or you don't, you know what I mean? It's just a, a lot of things happened in my life, but <clears throat> at the end of, at the end of all that, it just, it was a huge wake up call. Cause it's like, now what? Yeah. Cause it is when you have kids and they're young that you if you're a decent person you want yeah. to make sure that's kind of the the main focus in your life yeah providing and, and making sure there's some security there sure and then yeah i i, I got a 12 year old and eight year old i haven't i, I still have, to have that <laughs> feeling one day which i you know it's funny because i i've never really thought of that but i know it'll happen and yeah. i'm sure when it does i'm gonna be i'm gonna have some mixed up feelings about how well for shit, what am i gonna do now you know well fortunately for me i'm young enough to where like i can go do that thousand mile bike ride or I can go, you know, spontaneously just, you know, decide to go to Florida. You know, yeah. uh, we did that in uh, January 21, me and my brother, he was like, Hey, what are you doing this weekend? And I was like, oh, I'm just working. You know, he says, well, let's go to Jacksonville, Florida. What's in Jacksonville, did Florida? Did you ride up there or did y'all fly? No, we drove, we rode our bikes. Oh, okay. Thousand. <laughs> uh, yeah. He goes, he goes, he goes, okay. what's the, he goes, let's go to Jacksonville, Florida. So what's, what's in Jacksonville? He goes a thousand miles. And I was like, cool, when are we going? Uh, well, I'm off Friday. I was like, all right, cool, we'll, do, we'll go this Friday. It was like a Wednesday. <laughs> so we met up crazy. We met up Friday morning and we booked it. You know what I mean? Like, you can't do those kinds of did things. Did y'all meet at you spot on 1518 right there? Yeah, yeah, we did, okay. we did. <laughs> so um, it, it's, I think it's important to, you know, the, the entrepreneur side of you is going to want to work. You know, you got to build this, whatever it is that you're building. There's nothing wrong with that. But. And I used to hear people say it all the time. You know, you got to balance that out with something, you know, yeah. hell, even my brother, my brother used to always tell me all the time. He's like, dude, you need a hobby. You, you need, you need to do something, you know? And I'm like, work is my hobby. I love this, you know? And he's like, that's great. <laughs> but you know, you, you, at some point you're going to burn out. Well, so with you though, you you will find a hobby, but then you will obsess <laughs> over it and make it work. Yeah. Like you know, like yeah, God, I've been uh, yeah, I've been told that. You just started talking po podcast a couple of weeks ago, and here we are. And I'm in a studio. <laughs> like what the fuck? You know, what have you been doing, Jason? Yeah. Oh, I've, I've started looking at podcasts. <laughs> okay, well that's Jason. Yeah, that, that, everyone yeah. who knows you knows you. That's how it's going to be. That's true. Oh, well, hey, let's talk about getting motorcycles. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're like literally like the king of like every thousand mile trip across the United States. I'm like, holy shit. Like, I, I thought I was in a motorcycle, so I'm not even close to any motorcycles. So, yeah, and then go buy the, you know, the baddest ass Harley, you know, like you, I mean, I mean, I got to hand it to you. If you're going to do it, you do it right. Yeah, I don't, I don't ever that. put a toe in. No, fuck no, fuck no. It's funny though. It's from, from my perspective, it's funny because I like to see. The, the you know, funniest, the funniest story I love telling is when I started breeding rats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, right. That's I, I, I love that story. I'll, I will I'll tell it some of the time, but <clears throat> yeah, man, I, uh, you know, I, I will say I do go, I, I mean, I definitely go overboard. You know what I mean? It's sure. like, it, you say overboard, but I mean, you, you, oh, yeah, I'm your, overboard for a lot of people. Your brain is at. thirsty of the knowledge of whatever you yeah, you're man, interested I, I in. I love knowing how shit works. Yeah, you know, so, I, I, there's I, only one way to know is like get in there and just like you, like you do. I cannot, I cannot read from a book and comprehend it. 
you know what I mean? And apply it rather. You know what I mean? Like if there was an instruction manual that tell me how to set all this up, I would have been lost after the first sentence. You know, I'm like, open what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, open the boxes. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can do that. You know what I mean? I can't, I just, I can't, my brain doesn't work that way. It's like, you know, I, I'm going to gather all these things and I'm going to look at the ends and I'm like, oh, well, this end will go in that. Now what happens? Let me push some buttons and see what happens. You know what I mean? That's, I gotta, that's just how I, that's just how I roll, you know? Uh, hey, that's, you got to have minds like that, though. I mean, that's, and that's, you know, like I said, like uh, Rain Man Spark, you know? <laughs> the way different minds work in certain areas, it's like, you know, it sells, it sells in certain areas. And in other areas, maybe there's a little bit of a downfall. And, the, you know, for me, I mean, there's a lot. I mean, I got a lot more downfall, I think. But mostly self-inflicted damage <laughs> in the 90s. You know, yeah. You know, something I had an epiphany the other day. Um, about this, this whole Setzer Pendants brand that, you know, I'm starting to cultivate a little. Um, I'd made the comment to my son or my journal or something that um, I was like, this is, this is a blast. I love doing this. This is fun, right? Yeah. It marks off every checkbox that a hobby needs to check off, right? Yeah. And then I said, I just need to figure out how to make money with it. And then so... As I was typing, I, I was I was I was typing this out, and then as I was typing this out, I was like, "I'm having an epiphany. This is completely wrong. I do not need to figure out how to make money with this. Yeah. I need to I, I need to concentrate on my other revenue streams yeah. and have them making money, and then this is fun. I need to keep this fun or Something whatever. To look forward to. Yeah, you yeah. know, not, not, not another headache. Not worrying about how to make it make money. You know what I mean? And so for me, like my dad, you know, my dad was a huge inspiration in my life in, in this entrepreneurial mindset, this, you know, in this world, right? So like that man could, he could from, from picking me up from school to going to the grocery store, he could have had a million, million dollar ideas. You know what I mean? And, but so like he was, I, I think I, and I'm pretty sure I get this from him. He was so qu quick to like, well, let's try it out. Let's see what happens. You know, and yeah. so like I remember one time, I remember one time him and uh, a buddy of his, um, they, they, you know, they were work, uh, they were they were in the shop, right? You know, I come home from school, get off the bus, and I see that guy's truck, um, uh, over, you know, at, at the garage. So, uh, you know, I'm in elementary school, and I, I go walking over there, be bopping over there, see what's going on, you know. And they had this trailer full of all these tires. All these uh, worn down junk tires, you know? And then so I'm like, what are y'all doing? And they were booking it. I mean, that, they like my dad was a big guy, but whenever he was moving, he was moving. You know what I mean? So like, and then the other, you know, the other guy, Tom, he was doing whatever he could to keep up. He's just like, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're, they didn't have no time for, for little old seven year old Jason to go in there and start poking around. What they were making was the, the bumpers for 18 wheelers at the docks. Oh. Two big pieces of angle with a bunch of rubber cut up in the yeah, middle. Yeah, yeah. So they were cutting those tires down. They were drilling holes in them, bolting them between angles, and then, then they would take that and then throw them on the trailer, and then they would go sell them to these different. Uh, but I mean, that was just one of the things that it was just like he was coming home one day, and then uh, like he had a conversation or something with somebody back in the eighties. I mean, you, had, you actually had conversations with the people. Yeah, and they, you know, somebody was in trouble and needed some of these deals, and there was a shortage or whatever. I don't even know how the hell he got involved in it. it didn't matter. He wasn't doing it for free, so, right? Yeah. You know, and I mean, like he. I wish he was alive today so I could ask him just how many of those stories he's got, you know? Yeah. I mean, like th th he's got, you know, he got more stories in the Bible when it comes to that kind of stuff. He, he is the, probably the, just the most fascinating person when, th that I, that I personally know that, that, that just went all in with that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you could tell your 18 year old self anything, what would it be? And, and, and none of this, don't eat the mushroom shit. I'm serious. Life, life lesson. Man, sadly, I think at that age, I would just had to have beat the shit out of him. Because that's what I needed more than anything at that age. I didn't Asshole have that. You know, dad died when I was young. My mom. I, I, life literally just had to kick my ass. And, I, and luckily, it happened fast. I mean, by the time <laughs> you know, I was in jail right out of high school. I had two DWIs before I was 21. And by 24, you know, it's when my sister got killed and... And that's when I quit drinking uh, in 2002, and um, and so that was like that that was kind of a pivotal moment in my life. Uh, just 
cutting out the thing that amplified all my problems. Ugh. What would you say is your favorite productivity hack? Do you have one? How do you stay productive besides Adderall? My favorite. Yeah, well, I have to have Adderall. That's just for just <laughs> basic function of life, I think. Uh, my, fa- my favorite. Turn, like, it, turn act- it around to you. My favorite activity, like if I'm out there being productive, is, is out of the office talking to people. Just people, yeah. But whether I'm at a the grocery store or a funeral, or if I'm at a, in a meeting with a business, uh, you know, whatever, just sitting here, you know, like what we're doing right now, I, I can do this all day. So um, introverts, extroverts, right? So extroverts get energized by talking to people in larger groups and, you know, so that would be you. You get, you get, um, I don't know if inspired is the right word, but you get charged up, you get, you know, like, you know, um, if you I fork, a, to if, say to speak. If I have somebody captive to me blabbering, mm-hmm. then, then I'll keep on going. Yeah. And, but it, it, at the same time, there's a limit and it's like a, a recharge that I get, I have to have. Like, you know, I can't, I couldn't imagine trying to get out there and do it every day, like a motivational speaker or anything like that. Oh, right, right, right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I just, you know, uh, be it a, a spiritual talk or a talk of business, a talk of, you know, like whatever's really important in that moment. Cause a lot of times, you know, the business side of it, it really isn't important. Maybe the guy I'm going to talk to and going to eventually earn his business is a guy who's going through a fucking divorce or, yeah. or whatever, just, and he just needs to vent and maybe hear some shit. Like, you know, this is what happened whenever I went through it. Mm-hmm. You know? So like there's some common ground of like, you know, it, it gets better. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, uh, and it's funny because if you just go through life and, it's amazing how many people like in those little moments are like, you know, you don't even realize that you're helping them way more than, than, than you would you are. Yeah. yeah. You know, they, they come back and say, you know, Hey man, I'm glad you were there to talk. It's like, well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just and you know, uh, I do need, I do need a new auto insurance policy. So I mean, win, well, win. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, remember if, if you can, don't buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you sell your house? Are you renting it or what are you doing? I'm renting it to my son. Okay. I will be. I will be renting it. Okay. So right, so now, right now, they're just living there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Little fuckers. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Whatever. Well, and, and Justin's doing good with the He's real estate. He's doing awesome. I see, yeah. He is. And not only is he doing good, he and I are doing really good. Good. You know, he's probably the healthiest he's ever been. But, uh, yeah, he's flipping out. Well, he's uh, wholesaling houses. Yeah. And, uh, man, I'm I just. I linked up with my guy Donald. I know they've been doing some deals together and stuff. Oh, he's been awesome. Yeah, he's been uh, he's been killing it from what I hear. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And that's that's perfect for him, too. I mean, that's, that's kind of. Well, so that's that's a great. That's a great. That's a, that is, and he and I were just talking about that also, right? So, um, you know, he got, and, and I'm, I, I'd like to interview him, but um, he got into some shit when he was younger, you know, and um, uh, I, I was. know about that. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> my, my concern as a parent was, uh, and I told the lawyer this, look, you know, he, he got into some jail worthy shit, you know, and then I told the lawyer, I said, listen, I said, at the end of the day, I'm not trying to get him not to do any time. He did the crime, do the time. I want him to be punished. I don't have any problems with that. I don't want to ruin his record so that whenever he grows up, he's screwed and can't get a regular job. That's what I'm worried about. So I give him his beating now. Don't make it last forever. Right. So, um, uh, that's how we approached it. And then he ended up screwing it all up anyway. So fortunately though, he screwed up. He screwed all that up, you know? So there's only a couple of things that a convicted felon can do. The first thing he did was he was tying steel at a concrete plant 12 hours a day. That was how he got out of jail. He, he, he was a probation or a parole or whatever the hell that, that works. Hourly wage that we all love so much. Oh, but he was... He would come home and complain, and he was hurting. His body hurt, and he just hated life. He hated life. He wanted to go back to jail. I would, too. <laughs> he yeah. wanted, I mean, who wants to go back to prison? You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, Jesus. So um, uh, he had some restitution that he needed to pay and, and, and whatnot. But um, he, <laughs> he's, he's, taken, he's taken the long way, right? But... He's at a spot in his life right now where 
you know, the, the record that he has, it's, it's forced him to, to look, you know, at the fork in the road, I can go tie steel or I can go figure out something because this sucks. Yeah. You know, he needed and a if, taste of that to really give him that motivation, right? Well, a taste of that. And also if he had a clean record, he would just get a better job yeah. and he would be a shitty employee. I love you, son, if you're listening to this, but that's the truth. Well, I mean, yeah, along so, with me, too, so. Yeah, same here, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, right, he's got this, guy, I guess you could call it a burden hanging over his head about his, you know, his record or whatever. But, you know, it's like, okay, well, this sucks. This sucks bad, you know? So let me try this. A little shit's driving a Jaguar, you know? Yeah. I mean, he's hitting licks. He's hustling he's calling people he's getting out of his shell he's doing all these things because he's not trying to go tie steel yeah <laughs> you know what i mean and yeah, I, i'm just that, that is awesome man i yeah. love seeing that too because I mean, we talked about him getting into insurance yeah and, yeah you know, i said well you know felonies will be a problem he might be able to get a license yeah and then uh and the wholesaling thing came up and i and he had had something working already mm -hmm. and I'd, I'd given him my guy donald's number who works for one of that big acquisition firm in san antonio nice yeah. and so the, and then they know everyone in the business and then so he's just i mean i haven't done anything mm -hmm. i just gave him one number i don't even know if it was that helpful or not <laughs> i'm sure uh but he's made all his contacts and every time yeah. i see him he's you know he's flipping something new yeah like, okay man that away man uh, get out there I, I, and freaking just out there bird dogging, man. You know, and so motivation comes from uh, different things for different people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, unfortunately for him, it came in, the, in a term, of, in, in, a, in a, you know, in a, as a sentence. And <laughs> as a parent and as, as you being, you know, one of my best friends, I mean, you know, uh, I couldn't imagine like the feeling of like, you know, having to kind of watch your son go down that road. And then oh, thinking, it's so tough. Thinking like. And there's no happy ending there. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And that's a shitty feeling. I mean, that's, it, it's, it hurts from, you know, I know it from a parent, I can't really even imagine it, but just being a parent thinking, oh, man, I'm, I didn't want to think about that. And then kind of like seeing the happy ending of him finding his niche and then just taking it and going, you know? So he has taught me a lot in my life. One of the things that he's taught me is there's only one thing in this whole freaking universe that you can control and that's yourself. That's it. Yep. And so you can control whether you're going to get up and go bust ass or watch another season of bachelor or whatever the hell, you know? Yeah. I mean, only you can control that. 